You're trying to lose fat and you're completely wasting your time because you have a slow metabolism. Yes, it's true. Slow metabolism makes it almost impossible to burn body fat effectively. All right, let's talk about how we can speed that up. Mm. This one, a lot of people have difficulty understanding. I mean, they understand the whole like, oh, I have a friend that can eat whatever they want and they don't gain weight type of deal. But they don't understand just how important this is. And this is the most important part, how they can impact this, mm -hmm. that you can impact this. So uh, how much of a, how much do you think genetics play a role in this one? Because they play can, a role in everything. Of course yeah. they do. Of course. They, there's nothing that they don't play some sort of a role. But I actually do think that people think it plays a bigger role than what it actually really Very does. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. So, yes, uh, yes so, genetics always play a role in, in all things, right? Um, but the metabolism is so interesting how much we can manipulate it and move it and right. change it and how many different things uh, affect it that... The genetic piece, although does play a role, is much smaller than I think most people do. Most people, at least in my experience training clients, that would say what you talk about, I have a friend who get this, they think that they just inherited this shit, this shit genetics and terrible metabolism mm -hmm. and there's nothing they can do. It runs in the family. We all have a bad, slow metabolism and that it is what right. it is. And it's like, boy, you can radically change that no matter where your starting For, point first is. First off, let's talk about this whole, like, uh, it just runs in my family type of deal. Um, <laughs> obesity was almost non-existent until um, things started to get modern and it wasn't even prevalent until uh, hyper, uh, hyper palatable, ultra processed foods became the norm. That's when you started to see a big problem. And our genetics didn't change. We didn't radically become this new species. It was all of the signals coming in that changed from the food to the activity that changed radically to the point now where, you know, in America, majority of people are overweight and almost half of everyone is obese. And that's, you know, uh, some estimates say it's climbing. Some say it's flattened out, maybe going down a little bit. That's another discussion. But nonetheless, it's a lot of people. Um, you can greatly impact your metabolism in either direction. In other words, there's things you could do that will make your metabolism become more efficient, which is also known as slowing down. A slower metabolism simply means your body requires less energy to function, okay? A faster metabolism simply means your body requires more energy, uh, more energy to function, okay? So you need more energy to function. That's a good thing in the context of the modern world. You want to operate on more calories because now you have more of a buffer. So a fast metabolism is now an asset. It's an asset. And this is the thing people need to work on and focus on. And so the question is, what are the signals I can send my body that tell it to speed up its metabolism? And what are the signals that I can tell my body that tell my metabolism to slow down? Unfortunately, most people, when they embark on a weight loss journey, are sending signals to their body that say, slow down. Yeah without even realizing. So let's talk Slow about- Slow down and conserve energy. And that's, that's it. That's it. Let's talk about that for a second. Now, one signal that you can send your body that tells it to slow down its metabolism is to eat less. So I know, okay, I got to lose fat. I got to eat less. So what are you talking about here? Well, if you just eat less, your body will start to match your new caloric intake by reducing its metabolic rate. Okay. So if your body runs on 3000 calories a day, you're taking in 2000 calories, Initially, you lose weight, but then your body learns how to burn only 2,000 calories a day. That's why you plateau. Your metabolism has, has effectively become slower. So that's one signal. The second signal is, is the kind of stress that you place on your body and how that stress tells your body to adapt. One form of exercise that will oftentimes tell your body to become more efficient with calories are forms of exercise that are high calorie burning that require very little muscle. Okay, so a form of exercise that burns a lot of calories but requires very little muscle tells your body, okay, how can we become better at this activity? How can we burn less energy while doing this activity? Since we don't need a lot of muscle, let's pare muscle down. The form of exercise that does this best is cardio. The steady state forms of cardio. If you just do long distance running or cycling or swimming, in conjunction with a low calorie diet, you are sending two very strong signals to your body that say, slow down your metabolism. And the data supports this. I mean, we've been training people for, for decades. We saw this all over the place, mm -hmm. but the data supports this. People will lose 20 pounds and 10 pounds or more will come from muscle. 
Why? Muscle burns a lot of calories. You have effectively slowed your metabolism down. Now, on the flip side, how do I speed my metabolism up? Well, you feed it a little more, especially more protein, and then you send a signal that says, we need more muscle. I need more muscle in order to survive in this new environment. Strength training does that. Build muscle, feed that muscle, you now have a faster metabolism. And this is not just theory. This is practiced by thousands or hundreds of thousands of coaches worldwide who understand this. And in you know, in my personal experience, I've effectively gotten people's metabolisms faster by 500, 800, 1,000 or more calories very reliably. It's very reliable when you do this right to see someone's metabolism speed up. I feel like we, we really just started to get to a good place um, with this message not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago when it really started, to, I mean, at least for me in my, my bubble of training clients, like figuring this out and then re- uh, or changing how I coach and help people. And then, then out came like this counter message um, from our community of trainers that wanted to debunk the amount of calories that a, a muscle burns more than, than, than body fat and what it does to you, like building five pounds of muscle. And I really think it did way more harm than good yeah. to our, to our space. Like, yep. It's really unfortunate that um, that message is such a good message to communicate to everybody that if you have a, a lot of body fat that you want to lose, the the best strategy for you to do that long term, meaning you're going to lose it and then you're going to keep it off for the rest of your life, which I would think most people want to do. The best strategy is a slow approach of building muscle and building your metabolism so that your body requires more calories just to sustain itself and then ends up putting yourself in this like natural caloric deficit because the metabolism has risen and now losing weight becomes easy and more sustainable and for some reason you've got these these kids on Instagram that want to tout these studies that have shown that Oh, for every pound of muscle, your body only burns additional seven calories a day. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now uh, from experience, uh, hundreds of clients that I've done this with, uh, you put five to 10 pounds of muscle on a female client that was eating 1,400, 1,500 calories a day, and you radically shift. Oh, she's now burning 2,000 or more. Yeah, yeah. Radically. Easy. Yes. So it just doesn't math for, uh, and I don't know where the flaws. In, oh, I can tell the, you those studies are. You do, okay. yeah, hundred percent. So um, it's a super gross oversimplification of how the metabolism works. Now I'm not going to even pretend. By the way, nobody fully understands how mammalian metabolism works, and that's loosely defined as taking energy and converting it into tissue or burning it. Okay, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely complex- it's a moving target. Too. It's actually the second most complex thing we've identified in the universe. The brain being the first thing, the second being mammalian metabolism. In fact, at one point I, I, I saw this, there was this chart that of all the things that we understood that happened in the metabolism, and it was so dense with, <laughs> with chemicals and, and, yeah. and, and processes. Um, Might and as each, well be quantum physics. It's yeah. it's insane. So to 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 simplify and say one pound of muscle burns this much. No, no, no. Look, here's the deal. We know this for a fact, by the way. You cannot gain muscle and not lose muscle, and you can speed up and slow down your metabolism. There's a potential of calories that your body can utilize, and there's so many complex processes of becoming more or less efficient with calories, from producing energy to producing heat. To hormones, uh, stress, hormone, like sleep, it's, all those things. It's just it's it's insane, right? Yeah. So the process of building muscle, the process of feeding that muscle, it's this complex. We don't quite know how this works, but we know that it reliably speeds up somebody's metabolism, and it's not five calories per pound of muscle. It's yeah. far more than that. Yeah. Uh, when you see this in practice, and anybody who's trained people knows this. It's so stupid when they. Bring this up, and they try to you know um, deter people from. And there's all the downstream behavioral effects as well. That's you right. Know, they just don't consider in a lot of these studies, and it's it's very frustrating, you know, to kind of have that counter message because, like, given our current environment, we're trying to just look at this as a practical means to help, you know, equip people with the right 
uh, focus because there's so many different focuses you could you could get you know pulled into and so which one of them in my situation is gonna you know that I'm gonna apply is gonna produce the best result yeah. and look um, you know, Dr. C's talked about this recently in one of our forums like you in increase mitochondrial density by through the process of building muscle meaning one pound of muscle you might not even gain a pound of muscle but the pound of muscle that you have now because it's stronger more fit has more engines uh, fueling it, thus burning more calories on its own. Yeah, and we see this all. And a pound of muscle is not a pound of muscle either. Um, Dr. Gabriel Lyon talks about this. There's healthy muscle and there's unhealthy muscle. Um, so this process is extremely complex. But the the fact remains, if you want a a you want the best approach to fat loss, <sighs> you can either try to manually burn more calories over here by moving more. In which case, by the way, your body learns how to burn less calories through the same activity. Yeah. Your body learns how to become more efficient. <laughs> yeah. It's not unlike a super advanced AI car that learns how to run on less gas uh, because it starts to adapt. Your body does the same thing. But you can try burning more calories through activity, or you could teach your body to burn more calories on its own, which requires less work and is more reliable. I can, more, I can reliably speed up someone's metabolism. I cannot reliably get you to consistently burn more calories through activity over time because it starts, it stops working. And by the way, look, everybody knows this. We've all done this. I want to lose weight. Let me go start running. I lost 10 pounds. I plateaued. Yeah. That's it. Now what? Now what do I do? Oh, I got to run more, I guess. Lose another five pounds. Now I plateau Eat again. Less? Yeah. This is crazy. I'm eating 1500 calories. I'm running five days a week. I can't lose the last 15 pounds. What is going on? I've taken so many clients who've done tremendous amounts of cardio activity and eating low calories, slowly reverse diet them, switched them to strength training, and over the course of eight months or a year, got them to be leaner with far less activity, like far less activity because their metabolism got so much faster. This is the strategy that you want to employ if you want to live in a world where you can eat certain things and you don't have to worry so much. Now, if you want to look, if you're going to be a hunter gatherer and you're going to live in the wilderness, you probably don't want a fast metabolism. You want a metabolism that runs on very little because you're not going to find very much. But if you live in the modern world where there's food at every corner, uh, you want to enjoy yourself. And unless you get up and move, you're sedentary, uh, build muscle, feed that muscle. That's the most effective way uh, to get lean. And again, there, there's, there's data that shows us when you see strength training, with diet, you don't get any muscle loss. Cardio plus diet, muscle loss. So you want that muscle. You want it. That's what gives you that metabolism. Yeah. yeah. It makes it so much easier, too, for them to maintain once they get there. I think that's the other yes. part that's so important to understand is that, like, you know, just re reducing calories and moving significantly more than you did will absolutely result in the scale going down. But the, it ends up landing you in a place that's just not sustainable. Very few people are going to maintain that low calorie intake with that much of act that uh, much activity just to hold That's right. their weight where they're currently at. And it, it's, it's the reason why we don't have a, a weight loss problem in this country, right? We have a, a problem with maintaining that afterwards. We have right? a keep weight off problem. Yeah. yeah. That's where people struggle. Yeah, People lose weight every year. Tons of weight gets lost by people every, every January it happens. Yeah. And a lot, and, but problem is they don't, they can't maintain that. And it's because the way we've been approaching it, we've been, been approaching it in this reduce calories and just, just exercise, move more, increase intensity. And that strategy is just not a long-term winning strategy. You'd be far better off, you know, slowly building metabolism, building, which I get why that is so difficult. I've had so many clients sitting across from me who are telling me, Adam, I need to lose 50, a hundred pounds. Until they experience it, man. It's I, hard to get. It them, is. Yeah. And then you tell them, Hey, here's the deal. Like for the next couple of months, I actually don't want to see the scale move much at all or at all. And we might even put on a couple of pounds because we're going to go build some muscle. That is really, really yeah. difficult to communicate that. But we just had a conversation, um, mm -hmm. great conversation in our GLP-1 group. And um, I, I, I don't want to tell the lady's name just out of privacy, but she brought up like where she was at. And she is eating 2,000 calories. She was eating 1,100 calories before. I know. That's, so yeah. she was. So she's eating 2,000 calories right now, and she's frustrated because she's not losing any weight. And she's like, and, and Sal asked her like, well, what, what were you eating before we had convinced you to go on this reverse diet? She's like, oh, I was eating around 1,100. So he's like, <laughs> So you mean to tell me the last three months you have doubled your calories and we're not putting any weight on the scale? Do you understand how what how good your in that is? Yeah, yeah. But, but it doesn't. Her body is burning a thou almost a thousand more calories on its own. By the way, do you know how much cardio you would have to do to do that? Yeah, you would have to do like two hours of cardio to get close to a thousand calories. Yeah, her body is burning a thousand more calories a day without that. Right. Yeah. 
And so what we told her is one, we encouraged her and let her know that you're doing great. Stay the course. You know, it's been, you've been in this place for a very long time. It's going to take a little while before we get up to say like 2,800 calories and then bring it out. But what we both shared was this is an example of when I was training a client, sometimes what I would have to do in her case is tell her, okay, uh, I want you to cut your calories down 600 calories a day now back. So we go back to 1400 calories and we're going to do that for the next two weeks to just show her how I could get her to lose weight like instantly by doing that. And then I'd have to remind her that, hey, listen, you're trying to lose 50 plus pounds. This is not the strategy to get there right now. We still got to keep going. But let me, this is, it's working. Look at, look at how we just cut back and you're still eating yeah. more than what you were when you started. And now I got you losing weight. So I, I'd have to do that sometimes to show the client that I knew what I was doing and I was in that we're, we're heading the right it was way. All for mental. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, uh, on November 13th, we're going to record live me, Adam, and Justin creating a brand new MAPS program. You'll see it live, how we do the process and get some insight onto the new program. Go check it out. It's November 13th at 6 p.m. Pacific on Instagram at Mind Pump Media. Yeah, it's totally for mental. It's not what I want them to do. It's I want them to keep going that direction, but sometimes you'd have to interrupt those reverse diets or bulks with these little cuts to show them how quickly the body is starting to respond in comparison to where it was, right? Because she was at 1,100, not moving the needle whatsoever. Yeah. We convinced her to reverse diet. Over the next course of three months, she gets up to 2,000 calories a day. No weight on the scale going up or down, just kind of staying the same. She thinks she's failing, and you're trying to communicate to her like, no, you're doing phenomenal right now, but that is really hard for the client who is carrying that extra 30, 50, 100 pounds on their body and wants to get it off to to view that as uh, doing well, you know? Yep, totally. Yep. Speaking of that, of the forum yesterday, you guys caught the conversation we, I had with Colin and his his wife. Oh yeah, talking about the probiotics for the midwife. Yes, yeah, so, yep. so she tested positive for uh, group B strep, uh, which if you test positive for that, Typically what they want is they want you to go on antibiotics during uh, delivery because if the baby gets infected with this, it can cause you know meningitis, pneumonia, a bunch of different things. Now, for, some, for obvious reasons, maybe not obvious to a lot of people, they don't want to do antibiotics. Antibiotics during delivery means she's going to be not have beneficial bacteria. Babies pick up uh, a lot of their microbiome from their mother, yeah. some of it while going through childbirth. And there's probably some negative effects from that as well, right? You see higher rates of autoimmune issues and allergies. Like you want the baby to have this beneficial bacteria. Antibiotics kills everything. So they're like, okay, what do we do? Because they want us to go on antibiotics. So their midwife suggested that they take a probiotic. So what they did is they went with seed. Colin did, right? Colin. He, he intervened because he knew the company, right? Yes. Yeah. So he's like, hey, the midwife had a, a, a probiotic that they used. And, and he said, no, no, let's go with seed. Uh, because you know he's familiar with seed. They're the they're the best, Espe the, especially the delivery process. Yeah, like there like pro there's probiotics and then there's seed. They're like in a completely different universe. Yeah, in terms they're of in their, their class of their own. Yeah, Ho totally. They're the best. So she took seed and came back tested negative. No need for antibiotics. Wow. Yeah. They could do the That's they could so do rad. the delivery without having to take antibiotics. Well, you heard what the the midwife too blew her away because she's been recommending uh, probiotics. She says the best I've ever seen. Yeah, and so she's completely hopped over the other direction after years and years of like having her clients. And, and the way this works, by the way, for people like, how do, what does this have to do with, by the way, the group B strep is, they'll, they'll do a vaginal sample. That's where the bacteria was. And a lot of people carry this, by the way, so it's not like it's super rare. But when you take a good probiotic, the good bacteria crowd out the potentially harmful bacteria. So if you get an infection, sometimes it's because you have a, what's called dysbiosis, just an imbalance or gut issues, for example, sometimes yeah. skin issues are a result of this. So taking beneficial bacteria is, you know, uh, antibiotic wipes everything out. And sometimes when you wipe everything out, by the way, bad bacteria now have a foothold. For example, there's something called C. diff, mm -hmm. uh, which is an infection that can happen. It's really bad that can happen when people are on antibiotics for too long. They'll come off and then they're just like primed for this infection. Yeah. Probiotics aren't like that. It's all beneficial bacteria, so you're not wiping everything out. It's interesting. Um, yeah, that, that's such an important process too that uh, they're finding, you know, in sure. terms of that that exchange of, of beneficial bacteria and the delivery process. And then too, with the breastfeeding, like there was something else I didn't really consider, but I heard somebody talking about this as like a potential, um, you know, 
another reason why it's an important aspect uh, because, you know, the jaw itself, as it goes to that, like, sucking motion, yeah. actually, like, pulls your jaw forward and so a lot of times too like kids that don't have that it's underdeveloped yeah mm. a lot of the, a lot so, of the development comes from some it's of that. interesting it's, it's, just, wild? it's just wild if you go through those whole processes and you skip through things it's like even <laughs> crawling you know like you're gonna see uh some of that like vestibular de de development you, yeah do you know when the when the baby breastfeeds that's the saliva can tell the mother if they need to produce yeah, certain what kind of stuff, antibodies well, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And well, I remember learning too <laughs> that trip. at different times of the day, yeah. her her milk changes too. Yeah, so yeah. more sleepy milk in the night. That's versus, so wild. Dude. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. It's That's wild, so cool yeah, stuff. It's, it's hard to emulate that. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of speaking of moms and dads and stuff, I read and I've seen a couple studies that echo this. Is this the marriage study? Bro. Okay, I'm It's going to blow your mind. All right, I want to hear it. Okay, <laughs> so let's hear it. this was a study done by the National Association of Marriage Enhancements. This is in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, so what's the statistic that we are typ we typically hear around divorce? Fifty percent. Fifty percent, right? Yeah. Now, some yeah. people argue it's actually probably a little less than that. Yeah, because I've heard everywhere from forty to sixty. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, so it's it's definitely high. Right. It's, it's around it's that near half, you could say. Which right? is yeah, that's a terrible statistic. Um, uh, yeah. and, and divorce is very tough. I've been through one; it's real hard. So this study looked at um, things that impact divorce, and here's what they found: couples that prayed together every night. So they prayed together, not on their own, but together, out loud, every yeah. single night. What do you think their divorce rate was? Oh, gosh, bro. Come on. Way, I mean, just the less. fact that you have that, just because you're doing something like that. Zero? Yeah, it's probably really low. One percent. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. One, wow. One percent. That's insane. Yeah, and I've seen insane. other studies that echo it's somewhere like three percent, four percent. But it's not... A little bit better. It's well, significantly doing better. that checks several very important boxes, right? It means that you are both uh, morally aligned, yes, right. Mm -hmm. It means you're both growth minded. It means you're both growing together. Uh, you believe there's something far greater and more important than yourself or I mean, your it, spouse. You're both yeah, in right. tune with the same objective. Boy, does it really, yeah. It really yeah, but think check about, a lot of very important know, boxes. But compare of, this to therapy. Or counseling. Oh, right. Couples that go to counseling don't get 1% divorced. It's less than 50, but it ain't 1%. And they're doing all those things as well. The big, I think the big difference is there's two. One, someone is more important than your spouse. That's a big deal because a lot of times it's like this spouse needs to, yeah. my husband or wife needs to meet all my needs. Yeah. And when you're- you There's know, a greater purpose too. Yeah. It's, no, it's God is above all of this. And yeah. I think that there's a supernatural aspect. Of course, now I'm a new Christian, so but I do believe- Yeah. That there is a supernatural aspect where so, he steps in. So let me get that stat right. So that's is all together. So just purely couples who pray to oh, husbands and wives who that consistently pray, to, pray together, consistently pray together every night. There's a 99 percent chance they're going to they make won't it. Get divorced. Wow. I know. That's, that's even higher than an arranged marriage. Arrangement. You know how high arranged marriages are. Yeah, those are actually real. That successful. blew me away too. Because yeah. you, we, you know, I mean, think about that for a second. I think that's crazy wild. Yeah. Is yeah. your your parents basically choosing your your mate for life ends up being far more successful than than most. How many Disney stories are like, oh, like complaining about that, like, oh, I'm, but I love him, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And it's like, and, but but in real life, like it actually. Well, works I, out you know, better. you know what, what what that speaks to me more than anything else, and I don't know why, and 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 I think I've brought this up a few times, probably because it was such a big deal to me. Um, I I really I didn't understand love. Uh, I always took love as like this emotion or this right. feeling yeah. you're supposed to have. Yeah. I it was never communicated to me that love is an action. And so once I started to look at it like that, it completely reshaped the way I looked at loving my partner or finding true love or the whatever. Yeah. Then it was like totally different. Like, oh, if it's an action and it's work to do mm -hmm. that, it's not this thing I'm waiting on. Like so many people I feel like, had to fall in the same category as I did, yeah. where it's like you're waiting for this thing to happen. That's yeah. Just what happens be... when the feeling fades? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just that's that, and that's where people get in this predicament. Do, do you know in a ancient Greek? Uh, and again, this is in the um, in the Bible. Even there's different words for different kinds of love. It's not just love. Like we use love, and that means all love. Right. They have brotherly love. Like so, there's a love that you have with your friends. There's a love you have for your spouse. There's passionate love, and then there's love called agape. Agape is sacrificial love. This is the kind of love where you choose 
to sacrifice or submit uh, to the other person. Wow, look what Doug just pulled up. Okay, yeah. so United States, right, I said 40 to 50% is what they say the divorce rate is. Arranged marriages, less than 4%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I've read data around this. Do you know why they think that is? I mean, I've, I've, I have some uh, theories for yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, so what are your theories around that? I mean, think about this. Most people are getting married in their 20s, right? The ma yeah. vast majority of people are married in their 20s. You. You're all, we're all very aware uh, I mean, I like to think I was a pretty self-aware uh, teenager, 20-year-old, um, but I definitely don't think that I had finished learning who I was or what I truly wanted in a partner. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine being a father now that when my son turns 20, even if he's brilliant and self-aware, yeah. that I will have a better idea right. for what is probably- he's not a, fully mature yet. Yeah. I, we think mm -hmm. like- arrogantly when we're that age that we've really nailed down who we are and like uh, what we want. And I think uh, people that are around you probably have a better idea. Totally. Yeah. So especially the ones that love you, right. That have yeah. no bias. Like your friends are a ter terrible example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stay away from like asking yeah, yeah, yeah. your friends opinions. Your douchey friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That have a bias opinion because you're, you know, your video game time is getting interrupted or some shit like that. Like, oh, she's terrible for you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's cutting into call of duty. You know what I'm saying? Like, or your, or your, your, your bitchy girlfriend who's freaking just hates just wants to see you like more miserable yeah. than she is so she's telling you he's an <laughs> asshole i would yeah. never put up with that yeah, like yeah. those are terrible but your parents who i think truly want the best for you and want to see you live a better more fruitful life than the one they've created for themselves i feel like are probably one of the best people to probably advise you on hey this is probably a good partner on i don't so, know i i, I so hope I my son i really hope that he cares enough about my opinion on his, I mean, I want him to love and, and find yeah. the right woman for him. But at the same time, I hope that he at least cares what dad thinks, you know? So, there's, I, I, so I've read studies on this and the, the biggest factor that they think according to studies is the expectations are different. They think that's the biggest factor. Mm. So the common modern Western expectations for marriage, which a lot of researchers now believe contributes so heavily to the divorce rate is that I have this feeling and passion for love. That's what I've been sold by the media. This is what tells me I'm making the right decision. This is what I'm going to live by. In other words, during times of struggle when it's gone, does this mean I'm with the wrong person? Mm -hmm. Maybe this isn't the right person. Maybe there's someone else. Then you meet someone else that gives you the feeling, oh, maybe I need to be with that person. It's also the expectation of this person is going to complete me uh, and yeah. fulfill me. Right. In these other cultures, the expectation for marriage is none of that. Yeah. It's we are going to raise children together. That's right. We are going we're, to get older it's, together. It's all like team driven. It's we're going to build it, a family. It's like, life. you know what? I yeah. feel like they look at it more like, like almost like building a business. Correct. Yes. You know, and if in the way they approach that, like who would make a good partner and yeah. who, who can handle this and I can handle that. I mean, it's literally the way you build a good business and a good company. I feel like other cultures yep. look at building a family. It's yep. so interesting how. I mean, we we have you know Disney has changed that yeah, for it really is a it's lot of you think that you think that's a big part of it. Totally, I, I, I say that kind of tongue in cheek. Programming, but totally. no, I, I brought that up because that's the first thing I think of. It's like you know any time of like romanticizing, uh, you know this sort of rebellious nature to go with your passion and who you you know like who Dude, makes you feel all these things. You know your and feelings it, can lie. It's to so you, fleeting, and they often yeah. do. By yeah. the way, everybody, you're like, yeah. off the time. <laughs> if you follow your feelings, sometimes you're messed up. And yeah, you're that's screwed. where we're at in the world because and of everybody's feelings. Look, if you're going to be with someone for 30, 40, 50 years, do you think you're going to have great feelings towards that person all the time? Mm. You're going to go through seasons. Dude. And I, I remember I had this explained to me, uh, seasons. What does that mean? Oh, we're mad at each other for a week. No, no. Sometimes it's five years. Sometimes for five years, you guys are going to struggle. Yeah. But then you come out of it. And so it's a completely different, uh, I feel like half of what I'm trying to, uh, you know, explain to my kids and ha have to manage is the fact they have these big feelings and like, how do we deal with them and how do we acknowledge them? But then how do we like, uh, learn how to, um, you know, at least not, not necessarily control, but like, like, yeah, control and be responsible with them and, 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 and know like, you know, when it's beneficial when it's not beneficial. And it's like, you can't just like out with it, you know, and, and you have to be able to, uh, you know, here. Yeah. I'll back you up. Okay. So we'll go back to fitness. That's our expertise, right? If you just followed your feelings with your fitness and your diet. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> you just ate medicine. what you would just felt like you wanted to eat yeah, and you yeah. just, at, I feel well, like we need to go back to stoicism. Right. But point. no, but here's the deal though with it. Here's where it gets great. This is where it's interesting. And again, these, these, these ancient traditions teach this is 
you go first off, like the Bible says, your feelings lie, your 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 heart and your mind lie to you. And there's a lot of wisdom in that because if you just follow your feelings, you make a lot of crappy decisions. So let's talk about fitness. Yeah. You will eat crappy food and you won't want to exercise. You'll want to party. You won't want to go to bed on time and you're going to be unhealthy. But here's what happens if you do the right thing. You'll go against your feelings, but then guess what happens? Your feelings change. You do this well enough and you start to want to do the right things. You start to desire eating healthy more than you desire eating unhealthy. You start to desire being active more than you desire being inactive. So it's it's so I want I want to communicate that to people because I know this very truly for for fitness, it's not going to be this oh my god, I'm going to have to live against everything I want for the rest of my life. No, your feelings start to change. So in in regards to marriage, you know, I, I married the wrong person. No, what ends up happening is you become the right person. Right. Because right. you end up changing right. into the right person. You know, my right. favorite part about you reading the Bible now is that you, there is so many parallels to what we've learned totally. on how to help people get healthy and fit. Totally. Yeah. That if you like, I wish the church adopted the, the you know, what we talk about too. You know, I, you know yeah. I've always, I've always struggled with that, by the way, yeah. that that's, it's not more integrated into the church, Same. like as part of teachings, because so many of the lessons that we, uh, that we've learned on how to like help somebody get healthy and fit. Yeah. So apply. You know, I, I was talking to completely the same. I was talking to one of the pastors and uh, we were talking about fitness and he said, Oh, you're, you teach grace based fitness. I'm like, oh yeah, I like that. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. One of the biggest enemies towards your your fitness success isn't that you fail because you're going to. That's yourself. It's shame. Yep. Yourself. It's shame. It's I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. I'm bad. I can't mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And it, and your shame can drive you even to work out and to diet, but it ain't going to keep you there. Yep. And so how we talk about this and the reason why. And by the way, this took us a long time to figure out. Like I had to learn how to do this. For a long time, for the first half of my career, I was a sh really, I hate it. I, I loved my clients, but I was a crappy trainer because I didn't understand this. It's the grace based, like, here's the truth. You're going to mess up. Here's the grace. Don't feel bad about it. We're going to keep moving in this direction and it's okay. Yeah. And you're doing this because you care about yourself, not because you hate yourself and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. All the things that we communicate yeah. uh, on the show. You, did anyway. you guys see a uh, little bit of the total pivot, right? From talking about Bible stuff, let's talk about drama in the fitness space. Did you see. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jeff Nippert get fucking jacked. Is that real? Oh yeah, it's real. So that dude, who's that? Oh, guy? it's real. He went did it. Big Mike or yeah, something. Yeah, big Big Mike Wick Wick Big Big Mike Wick or someone. What is it? Van Wick. Van Wick. Thank you. Big Mike Van Wick. Apparently, he's a bit of a bully, huh? Yeah. So I mean, it. it he actually went. So uh, Nippert has already re re like responded to the whole everything that went down and. and said, what did he respond? What did he say back? Oh, he, just making clear how it all went down. What did he say? He said that he, he, he will go to his, go to uh, Jeff Nippard's Instagram. He literally did a post and wrote out, were, wrote it out what, what exactly yeah, happened. Well, so yeah, just tell him what happened. Yeah, so he went, he, they saw each other in the gym and passing. And I guess uh, Mike said something like under his breath. And then, you know, I guess Jeff said he just kind of chuckled, whatever, didn't say anything. Mm. And then he passed by again and made some snide remark. And then Jeff was like, what did you say? And then that triggered him to basically come over and grab him by the throat and throw him down. Yeah. And then I guess he got back up and he did it again. And then he also showed the camera. So look at he went and got a cat's can yesterday. Yesterday that that post right there oh, is, is him. Oh, here I'll read it to you. You got it. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah. So this is exactly what happened. He's this is his words. As I was filming bicep curls for a YouTube short, Mike brushed by me and said, "Sup." This was our first engagement that day. I chuckled. Mike said, "Oh, things are about to get real funny." As he walked past me, then I asked him. What did you mean by that? And I made sure my cameraman was filming in case he tried any funny business. Then he walked back towards me and he said, turn the camera off and immediately jabbed me in the throat and I fell on the floor. Pure muscle and fitness allows filming, by the way. Oh, this is a gym. I stood back up and he told me to never talk about him ever again. Then he jabbed me in the throat the second time. Then he turned to my videographer and pushed him against the cable machine. Then he walked away. That's the full story. And there's gym security footage to prove it. It's up to the gym if they want to release it. Hmm. You know... Is there more? Is there any more of an insecure space than oh, fitness? God, it's so it's crazy. Just, These just are grown men. What are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, you know? And all over, so all over social media content, right? Like, I think Jeff has made certain claims that it has been a, like a direct shot at yeah. Mike and the content that he makes. Yeah. And so it's been this like you know hating on each other turns to this like insecure situation where they see each other. I don't know. 
I mean, I'm, I, me I'm not a fan of either one. You know what I'm saying? I think that obviously in this situation, the Mike guy looks like the biggest asshole in this. Jeff Nipper's got great content, smart guy, super smug, super like, I'm intelligent, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Likes to tear the people down. Fine. That's your, that's your stick. So at some point, somebody's going to do <laughs> yeah, something like that to you. You're going to poke at a guy <laughs> who's insecure, a big insecure meathead. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, totally. And then the dude strikes back at him and it's like, whatever, dude. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> most people are going are gonna to come at you head. for saying that he tears people down because he doesn't do it in a way, he does it in a smug way, to your point. That's it. You know, it's like uh, it's like finding people's content that you know have uh, that yeah. have so that and then directly unpacking it and disassembling it from a scientific perspective. Yeah. Which, by the way, I mean, this is kind of a, a perfect conversation in line with how we started this with like the whole metabolism thing because it's trainers like this that when they they take out pieces from studies and then they put out this information to try and clown on the other trainers that have been saying things like, yeah. "Hey, build five pounds of muscle and speed up your metabolism radically," and then they come over and be like, "This is what the research says. It only says it's seven to twelve calories." You've helped approximately zero people exactly, by doing that. and all all you've done is you look smug about it. You look like a prick trying to make somebody else look stupid and 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 the worst part of all of it is that you lose a lot of people that may have been going down the right path yes. of trying to build their metabolism and do it the right way and now they go oh fuck why do i care about building five pounds of muscle it gives me give me an extra 30 calories yeah. that's not doing anything for me today i can go for a walk and it'll do way more than yeah. that why would i do that and so yeah. that's the part i don't like about the you know super smart science community in in our space is the is when you do that stuff to make content that goes viral just to kind of shit on somebody else's content and the end result is the only people and by the way the people that will even defend him in this situation are all the fitness radical people like the people that really love that content are other fitness nerds that already don't they don't really need that, that. i really don't care about helping that much because yeah. you're already working out yeah you're, it's you're the 80 percent yeah. of the population that are that are heading down the really dangerous bad path and unhealthy that we're trying to help and save and communicating it that way where we're tearing each other down in the space you, it's just not productive you know what it is about our space i think in general super high performance uh it tends to be driven by insecurity right the, the extreme performance but when you look at fitness mm -hmm. a lot of people and we'll just talk about men and, but i think this is true for women too but men okay a lot of guys get into strength training, most of them. I did because of insecurities. You're insecure because you're, you're too skinny or you're short or you're somebody yeah, bullied you. Yeah, picking on you. Or whatever. And so you get into it. And then if you get a name for yourself or you build a physique, then that insecurity has not gone. No. Now you start to- it Turns into bravado. Yeah. And then you, and then you start to direct it uh, at other yes. people. And that, now I'm the bully. Now yeah. I'm the one that's going to tell you people. Weaponize it. And, and, and they'll weaponize intelligence. So that's people like, you know, Jeff Nippert, very smart guys. That's his weapon for bullying other people. It could be their media. It could be their following. It could be their body. Yeah. It could be all these different things, but it just gives the whole space a bad. I agree. Whole you know, uh, we talked about this one other time before, and I want Dylan to make sure he shows a, either a clip of it or for at least Doug, I know has a picture of it. So I went back. I was, uh, Doug's one of his Instagram is one of my favorite to look at because he rarely posts and it's like a great timeline of the entire yeah. business. And there's a picture, and Doug can look it up on his Instagram to tell me the date because I don't know the date off the top of my head. But way before this was a popular thing, right? It's become popular in the last four or five years, I'd say, of this taking other people's content and like basically punking the people. Oh, that like are in your there. faces in the corner. Yes, and you're, and you're, and you, yeah, they're your faces in the corner, and you're talking about their content. We did this. I know. And we <laughs> shot. Uh, we never aired it. Though. That's right. We shot no. several videos uh, doing this. We thought of this idea before it was a thing. <laughs> And the reason why oh, we never put it, it out there, there it is right there. What's yeah. the date on that, Doug? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, July 6th, 2017. 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back in seven, seven, eight years ago, we were, we were creating this content and we chose not to put it out there because after we sat down and we watched it, we all agreed. We were just assholes. Yeah. Was, well, yeah. We just said it, it's not the, it's not the right message. No. It's not yeah. the right to come down and try and tear down these people to make us look smarter and better was just not what we were looking to do. But I just find that kind of interesting that we were onto that way before it was a thing. And now it's this like it's super everywhere. popular thing yeah. and people eat it up. And they love the drama, and they and they follow it like crazy. And it's like you know we could have been going it's, viral. It's Jerry that. Springer shit. We could have been going viral for that seven years ago, and just chose not to go down that path because I thought it wasn't. We all thought it wasn't tasteful yeah. and scrapped it. I don't know, Doug. Do you still have like clips from it? I know you have to have it recorded. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. 
if Dylan could get that to show just yeah, a little short. Yeah, but don't short, show the person because we were making fun of people. Yeah, we'll just show, <laughs> just, show a, just show a clip of us, you know, what we were doing. In we, our defense, we're pretty good at it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if we wanted to. If we wanted <laughs> to, like, you would get it. We got, yeah, we got, like, we got but, Justin know, on our team. I'm just saying, he knows like, how to do it's, it's, well. it's kind of a superpower that I'm just, like, yeah. not allowed to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I love it. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, if if you're all for all the creators that yeah. are in fitness that are listening to this right now, that if you're if your true desired outcome is to help people right. and to help the majority, the majority, first of all, is not science nerds. It's not people that read studies every single day and want to know the nuances of it's every not the little big jack bros. Either. It's not. It's 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 neither one of those groups. It's the average person that thinks that fitness is this crazy, obsessive, dedicated thing you have to do seven hours a week and kill yourself and you have to look in the mirror all the time and you have yeah. to be body obsessed. That is what most people think about us, all of us, yeah. and, and speaking to all of you content creators. And there, you can all fight over that 10% that are already obsessed and, and insecure about working out and, love, and loved all the study shit. Or you can move away from that lane and go help the 80%. With chronic illness and, yeah. and health issues who, who just, they can't figure it out because they get the wrong information. Yeah, it's transformative uh, in that community. And it's like, that's who we want to yeah. pour our effort into. Attention trainers and fitness fanatics on November 12th at 4 p.m. Adam and I are teaching a webinar for personal trainers in particular, how you can keep your clients during the holiday season. It's a free class. It's totally free. We're going to teach it. If you're interested, Click on this link. Speaking yeah. of like like social media and crap talking stuff, you know what crashed me up? Hmm. People, so so Caldera, right? We work with Caldera, and they use our clips a lot for their ads and stuff. And you ever read some of the comments? Oh god! First of all, <laughs> yeah. majority of the comments are good. I do actually, yeah. but every it's, once in a while, fun. you'll get a dude or two on there. It's like, oh, guys Ugh. doing skincare. Ugh. Why would you guys do skincare? Your wife making whatever, you yeah. know, kind of making those jokes. Yeah. And I laugh because I remember thinking that. You know, I remember thinking that myself. Yeah, I'm sure, wanted, I, I'm sure I did. But, uh, I mean, it works. <laughs> and yeah. it's it does work, and it's healthy. It's good. It's really good for your skin. But I, I remember thinking that. I remember when they want to work with us, we're like, we're going to sell skincare. Yeah, there's Doug just pulled up right now. Men, quit being feminized. <laughs> if you're married, why do you need to have prettier skin? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> first of all, my, my wife is the one who actually helps me stay consistent with it because she sees such a huge difference. Yeah. So if she doesn't see me put it on she'll be the first one to bring it over uh, over to my counter and say oh the new caldera came in and yeah. set it on set it on the counter so i have it and i mean it's i think a, I, I like it because it's okay i know it makes your skin look better that's why most people are going to use it okay fair enough but it makes your skin healthier yeah caldera is not well that's the chemical base of, that's the by, looking better is the byproduct of it being that's healthier. what i mean it's yeah. not like some chemical based product uh that's trying to hide things it literally balances out your skin's microbiome reduces inflammation all with these natural botanicals. It's actually healthy, so it's it's a health product. Oh, it's, so I think that's a that's a great point, Sal. I think if it was because uh, I think the way someone comments like this, it's like it's makeup for men, and it's not that. It's like if it was something that I was doing to look better, and it wasn't healthy for me, then you probably wouldn't I wouldn't be, be bought into yeah. it. It's the fact that oh, this is something I can do for my skin that's healthy for it. Oh, and the byproduct is yeah. it looks better. Okay, I'm I'm in. Like yeah. I'm committed now. So. This is the same guy that's like you. I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, yeah. they, which was still all like, excuse me, which was all of us at one point. <laughs> I, I, at one point, more. I was like, that's what I'm uh, saying. Like, I was like that. I'm like, oh, skincare, lame. You know, <laughs> like, but at some point, you got to realize, like, look, this is Dude, good for me. You just, how do you remember? And I, we're probably still like this in some ways, right? Because I think as you get older, that, that's what kind of, I, so, so I always try. And when, when you get the self awareness and know that you were that asshole, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. The, now in my 40s, I go, for sure. Where asshole. am I still like that? Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, always like searching my life and go like yeah. I've got to probably be there somewhere else yeah because like, like when we're 60 we're well, probably going to look back and be like oh yeah, I expect it's... comments like that because it's like it's just keeping it real you know uh, at the same time but like oh okay that's where you're at you yeah. know that's where you are <laughs> but do you guys remember like how arrogant you were in your 20s just with stuff that you thought you were so sure about of course oh god yeah what a yeah, I thought I had it all dialed in so much so that I, if I went back in time and appeared to myself Okay, like you wouldn't even twenty year old listen, Sal listen to yourself. sees forty something year old Sal from the future, right? And I'm like, listen, I'm from the future. You can't deny it. It's you. And he's like, oh yeah, it is me. 
don't do this thing and do this. I'd be like, eh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't even know if I want to listen to myself. <laughs> That's so bad. It's so, it's so, so bad. bad. All right, guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Coming I didn't give me that warning, hot. but maybe I'll just. Uh, I'll hey, I, I saw something totally off subject, but I, I, I wanted to show you guys because I thought it was so neat. And I, I always find it interesting. I don't know if you guys are this way. Like when other countries do things like better than us and like, because why we don't just adopt it and like, why, why if someone else is or some other country has figured this thing yeah. out yeah. with our power, our strength, our resources, why would we just adopt? Because we're the best, Adam. And, anyway, next question. Yeah. <laughs> so in <laughs> Switzerland, <laughs> okay, one of, one of my biggest pet peeves, and, and, and maybe this is because recently I've had to deal with like road construction. And oh, getting, Switzerland? You're yes. bringing this up? Oh, Have you seen the way, yes. they, the way they do- The overpass? Yes. What do they do? It's, okay, so when- It's a mobile overpass. Yes. What? So, what okay, mean? when the, you know when the, okay, there's always roads being redone, construction, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And then when you do, they narrow it down to one lane, and then now you got all this traffic. Oh. I was seeing the same so thing, So they make- they make this portable overpass and they do, they literally connect it yeah. and build a, a. So you drive over the construction. Guess what? Yes. Like none of the traffic stops. Yes. It's just wow. free and clear. And guess what? They're, they're addressing all the wow. needs. Like it's just, it, duh. Do, I know. It's doesn't, a duh. It, doesn't it seem like so duh? Like, well, it's just, it's just more proof that a uh, government sucks at like doing things. Well, in Switzerland, they're really efficient because uh, a lot of the people agree on what to do. Yeah. And they're, so the government moves very quickly and everybody agrees. We have so much bureaucracy and so much. Well, they're innovative uh, too. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. They, they just are, get so, stifled. So they're no, so in the, in the dairy business, like Switzerland and um, uh, where else is the other place that, uh, not Australia, but, um, God, there's another place that is known for like their dairy and stuff. New I remember Zealand. my my guy was yeah New Zealand. They were going over. They were going over there, and he'd come back and he'd be like the way they do everything, like their carousels for their milk. Let's team, take the way notes. They, yeah, yeah, it's like it's yeah. like they were so far ahead of us. It's like how could we be so behind on some of these things? It's weird how you have these countries that have been doing things more yeah. efficiently there's for so long. It's not like we don't have the the World Wide Web. To right, connect right. Us, that's why yeah. there's also a lot of time laws done? and stuff that we pass that prevent. Uh, yeah. That can prevent a uh, certain progress, like like nuclear power, for example. We know, like like new technology, nuclear power plants are so clean and so efficient. Yeah. But the regulations we have around them to build one is just so expensive. Yeah. Meanwhile, the countries are are able to. Well, do the fear mongering is really what you know drove people away from. Yes. That. And that's so I huge get things problem. like okay, look at this, Sal. Look at oh yeah, they just put it right over. Well, oh, isn't that great? It's like Legos. Yeah. Wait, didn't Switzerland invent Legos? Look at that. And then they just... Uh, no, that's Denmark. Denmark, my bad. Yeah. It's the other white people. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually their logo. Uh, <laughs> the, the other white people. But Im imagine you do this, and then now as you do these sections, you just kind of rolls on wheels, and then it goes right over. Look at that. You do all the work right underneath it. Cars just keep on going. No big deal. I, yep. What? Yeah. Hey, hey, why don't you just drive uh, up on top? Look at They're doing all the work yeah. underneath. Up on top. Wow. That's great. Isn't that that's super interesting? I thought, man, uh, what? It's brilliant. Hey, that's the you other know thing what too. though? Self driving cars are gonna change all this. Everything. Well, how would that change that? Yeah, but like, self driving cars, because they'll all be synced up. Uh, oh, you won't be see so as much traffic. No. I know they do say that uh, most what percentage of traffic traffic congestion is actually related to like human error? Yeah. Yeah, like the majority. It's, it's like yeah, a, I was gonna say like ninety percent. Let's be honest. I, I've seen <laughs> and this has just been my own thoughts. And then I, I'll, I'll get to a point where I'm like weaving all the way to the front. And then I see who's the culprit. Yeah. And it's always like, you know, it's one person and another person. And they're just like this, yeah. you know, like blocking everybody. Yeah. So when all the cars are synced, think about when you're stuck in traffic, when all the cars are synced, they could technically all move and they the can go time. fast together. All of them. Yeah. But they have to be synced to do that yeah. because uh, with human error, you get in accidents right, and stuff. Right. So, yeah. yeah, it's really, it's just, I mean, that's such a big yeah. ship to steer, like mm. to change, you know, mm. like that's going to oh, take a I saw our I saw our friend Jen Cohen driving around in, in, in one where that was self-driving. Oh, yeah. oh. No, she was in the backseat and it was driving her around in LA. Oh, wow. So they're, they're, they're putting them into play. They're already there, huh? I mean, yep. Elon like unveiled, what was it? The, the robo cab and, yeah. uh, in that like bus one, that it all looks like, uh, I robot. Like he, <laughs> I swear he just like, yeah, I want to look like that. So yeah. Being a car guy, what I'm most interested in is what does it do to that market? Like, 
to the car, like the current car market. Yeah, like collectors. Yeah, is it is it does it make it go up and then they so do they stop producing? Like, is there still going to be a large percentage of people that still want to drive? It's going to be rich people that own cars like yeah. horses. Like nowadays, if totally. you you know like yeah, if, if you, you own horses, you're yeah, rich. if you own horses around here, if you're in another, the economy class, like you know you just step into a a, a car that just. I think goes. so. Speaking of horses, by the way, did you see the new sport that they're trying to put in the Olympics for reals? What? Is it the hobby horse thing? Yeah. It is. No. They're, they're petitioning the Olympics. Everyone we made fun of that. <laughs> so they're getting rid of breakdancing because of that idiot lady that, you know, ruined it. They almost got rid of wrestling. In, they're going to put they in a hobby horse. They almost got rid of wrestling. Like a legit sport. <laughs> yeah, I know. The most legit sport. Yeah. They're, 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 they're talking about trying to put That's hobby so horse silly. <laughs> no. It, it, come on. It's not real. Do you know what another name for that is, by what, the way? What, what? It's, uh, okay, what's the sport called with the real horses that do that? Is it, it's called something. Oh, I don't know. Would they jump over those? Uh, someone's going to make fun of us. Right then, now. Do you know what that's called, Doug? <laughs> I equestrian. think I do. But it's like equestrian. Jumping. Yeah. Okay, they were calling it vegan equestrian. <laughs> Good guess. They, 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 they called it equestrian. They were calling it vegan equestrian because vegan? no no animals. We're going to use pretend animals. It's no, vegan. it was yeah. not. That's not what it was. Do they called. have to make noises and they get judged on that? They, like, I, I think they do make noises. They do. Uh, and they make. Little they sound. make noises. And yeah, the, I think. So. I want to be the guy there with the coconuts. Just. Yeah. Do you know when, when you see, by the way, have you seen some of these people, well, this is going to be mean, you ever seen them get interviewed, the hobby horse people? Yes, yes. It's exactly what you think they'd be. Yes, yes. It's 100%. Like, if you picture who would do this as a sport, uh, it's the that's same, the person. Same girl has a thousand stuffed animals. <laughs> yeah. You know? Why is that the so same true? Girl. Yeah. Why is that so true? I don't know. But she's like 20 she's something. really into, uh, yeah, Rainbow Bright oh, and uh, <laughs> like so unicorns gosh. and a lot of stuffed animals. Uh, hey, has the... Has the um, the age increased at what the average American stays at home after, like, after yeah. call. Is it like, what is it? I was watching, I was watching My Love is Blind thing and it was like, <laughs> Watching this, uh, what are the odds are Italian? No. Did I, Stop. I don't, <laughs> we started that yeah. trip. <laughs> I have did. cousins, I have cousins, <laughs> they didn't move out until they're like 40 something. No, I why yeah. would you 40. though, dude? Your mom does everything, they gotta take care of your cousins. You don't want to leave your mom. I, well, yeah, but yeah. like, uh, my mom did. So, I think the only way that works is you have to marry like an Italian woman who understands that, right? Oh, you mean that does everything for you? Well, no, like, so if you're a 40 year old Italian man living at home. Your only option is probably to marry another Italian woman who gets that culture. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. some other somebody else would be like, "What? You live at home still in your forties? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're in, in especially uh, yeah. in southern Italy, it's not that it's not crazy weird. that right. you live at home even though you're in your thirties or forties. It's not that crazy here. Everybody's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's happening? It's time. What? What? Okay, so because you guys aren't you guys aren't there yet. So what is your thoughts on that? Like, how? What's the cutoff? You guys let your kids stay back home. Oh, that's tough. I don't know if I have an, a specific cutoff, but there, I think context matters. Uh, if don't they you leave for college and they come back? They're paying rent. Yeah, there you go. That's I, that's, it. that's 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 100%. I agree with yeah. that. Okay, so like then, once you got once you're ready to get a job, now you, you can pay come back rent free. Yeah. Okay, okay, so but yeah, but then how like is it like a super crazy deal and so they they don't like you let's say I'm your son, I come back and you're like, "Okay, 300 bucks a month to rent a room." And I'm like, "Cool, doing it." By the way, so I did that for my grandma. My grandma, I moved in after college, yeah, yeah. and I paid her 300-something bucks a month yeah. rent. Uh, now, do, if I want to just keep staying, paying 300 bucks, because that's a really good deal no, in the Bay Area. It, it'll go up. Yeah, what's, yeah, yeah, like, up. yeah exactly. like, how do you guys manage that? Uh, like, have, uh, there's and ways if, I'll be muscling them out. And I feel like if you guys, if you don't have, <laughs> like... walk around naked in the house with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you guys haven't thought about this, and there's not, like, an age cutoff that you guys have thought of, I feel like this is going to creep up on you. I feel like real easily, it's like, oh, if you want to help them out, come you in. You know what's crazy, them. though? Yeah. So here's a reality, because context matters, but here's a reality. Because... Of where we where we live, this is one of the most expensive places in the world. You, you they say know, it's going to become more common your, right now. Your kid might say, "Hey, Dad, yeah, I can't right. live here. I have to move across the country." Would you rather and me live? Would with you rather you? me live with you? Now that's a tough one. That's a tough one because yeah. then you're like, "Oh, I'm not going to see my kid," but they got to be yeah, responsible. That's also, manipulation on their part. Yeah, right? that's true. So yeah. now Katrina and I agreed on this. I think I told you guys this before off air. You that, have a number that no, 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 no uh, that we would we would we would move where he's at. I thought that too. I would. Me and Courtney said that, especially being that we only have one. Might might change obviously if we had a second or a third because yeah. that becomes a little bit. Bit dicey, right? How do you decide what kid you're gonna go live by? Yeah. You know, oh, I'll pick the best one. I'm gonna go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we see your, who your preference yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, having one, I think it's kind of easy for us. It's yeah. just like, okay, you know, if he can't afford to to live in California, the Bay Area, or stuff like that, and he's got to live somewhere else. Like, 
we, by that time too, we're, you're talking, we're, we're 10, 15 years beyond 15 plus years beyond where we're currently yeah. at right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're in a place where we could go do that. Like that would, that would play a big role on what I, where hmm. I end up would be yeah. where he ends up like that. Or you buy a pro I have a friend. That I was did, thinking like, yeah, like do like a condo or something where you could come like stay for a week. I had like, a friend that, that his dad owned a, uh, like an apartment, like a duplex or whatever. Uh -huh. And then his kids lived in there and paid him rent and he gave him a good deal, but they yeah. still paid rent. That's kind of the move. I right? also, I also have rethought about this uh since i read that book um die with zero and in that book like i know all of us have uh set up retirement and and things like that and we've already started to structure things in case we were to pass and inheritance all that good stuff you know uh after reading that book and reading what the average inheritance what time it comes for a kid is not when they're a kid they're 60 years old that's what the average age is yeah. when somebody gets uh inheritance it's like, am I really helping them at that point? At 60, if my son hasn't figured it out, he's either never going to figure it out or he's right. doesn't need whatever it is I have to give him. So then, you know, maybe it's a better strategy in like to the point we're making right now is like, you know, maybe I buy him a house in the Bay Area where he maybe he couldn't afford to buy it like that, mm -hmm. but then he pays property taxes, expenses, things like that. But I can handle the, yeah. the, the I ha handle the home. And so then that's my way of, him getting some of his inheritance is by helping him that way. Would you guys do something like that? You think maybe I th the context matters because yeah. like, what if your kids like? Oh, oh yeah, no. If you're, he's like, I'm assuming Adam. we have good kids. We have a shit butt kid. He didn't get nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my kid will. That'll be very clear. Am I like you? Don't just you know get. The money because yeah. you you are my son. You 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 will have to still earn it in a different like, way. Dad, I'm gonna keep working at GameStop. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah, gonna do that. You know? yeah, <laughs> not happening. Not happening. I don't want to go into management though because yeah. it's too much stress. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> not happening, dude. That's good. Hey, you get it as a wedding present, right, Sal? Oh yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah we're, we're, don't put it. Yeah, out I don't want to put it out there. It's yeah. too early. Okay, it's too fine. early. It's fine. We're, we're trying to set it up, man. Yeah, we're matchmakers. Mm. Uh, do we have a shout out? Oh, I was gonna shout out our 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 youngster Danny Mentrega. The last two times, the last uh, two pieces of content that he put out, I thought were were really good. He did a video um, recently, and I typically don't like the smug talking about somebody else's content. Yeah. But the way he did it, I thought it was tasteful, and I made a comment. I said that to mm. him. I said, I normally don't like, you know, smug, you know, these types of videos, but the way you did it. I thought was tasteful. It wasn't like you're attacking the person. It was you were tr coming from a place of point. So I really thought that was really cool. I also know that mm. he's got a baby on the way. He did a really cool video uh, uh, carrying around. Oh, water, congratulations! Wa watermelons. All right. And so I thought, I thought that was pretty good. Good so, for him. Yeah, we shout Danny, Man Danny. Mantrega out. You've probably heard of all the benefits of CBD. Anti-inflammatory helps produce feelings of euphoria. Helps reduce autoimmune issues in some people. It's an antidepressant in some cases. Anyway. There's a company called Ned that we work with that uses full spectrum hemp oil extract. So you get the CBD, but you get all the other cannabinoids in the hemp plant, meaning it's way more powerful. In fact, this is the one you feel. Take it. 45 minutes later, you know you took something. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. And if you use the code mind pump, you'll get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Barrett from Texas. Hi, Barrett. How can we help you? Hi, how are y'all? Good morning. Good. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. First of all, thank you so much for taking my question. This is so cool. Um, so my question was, how often do you need to switch up your workout routine? And a little TLDR about me is I have been lifting for about four years and I started during COVID. The first two years of lifting, I was not eating adequately. And so I didn't really see a lot of strength or muscle progress during that time. But for the past year, I have been in a slight surplus and saw a lot of progress for about a year. And then I noticed a couple months ago that progress goes stagnant and I track all my workouts on an app. And I actually went to look at like the bench, for example, and um, I haven't really seen progress on that workout for about a year. I have been like lifting the exact same weight. And I eat my body weight and protein. I prioritize whole foods, push myself till failure, um, to prioritize sleep. I have tried doing different things, but no matter what I do in like all of my lifts, lifts, um, I just can't move up in weight. And so I wanted to know one, like, why would I be so stagnant? And two, like, is it because I'm not really switching up my routine? 
Good, yeah, pro good yeah, programming yeah. for sure. It, it, it could be um, now. A couple things to consider, Barrett, is that the first three years of training for most people, if they do things right, that's <clears> when they're going to see most or of their yeah. strength gains. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make strength New gains, gains continuing on, but after that, it starts to slow down, anyways. Now, I'm reading your question, mm. the question that you sent in. It could very well be a programming thing. However, I'm reading your question, and it says here that you're eating about 1,800 calories a day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, and what's your current body weight? It also says, what, 15,000 or so steps a day plus the four days a week of strength training? Five days usually. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And my body weight right now is 145. I'm 5'6". Yeah. You're, okay. you're, and you have a high volume. Look at your workout that you yeah. sent us. It's pretty yeah. high volume. Your calories are too low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way too low. What's exciting about this is we're going to make a couple of adjustments right now and give you yeah, a program. You get a boost. And you're going to see a, a, a difference right away. Like huge yeah, difference. Yeah. I mean, even if you didn't change your workout, although I think your workout needs to change too. Yeah. Uh, if you just went up to, you know, 2,100 calories, you would see strength gains probably within the first week or two. Get her off a split, go to MAPS Anabolic, bump your calories, 200 something calories. Watch what happens. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, done deal. Well, that's That's what we need to do. You have just your body has become really efficient at at what you've been doing. I mean, you at, at such yeah. a low calorie too. So low calorie, train you're training very hard with lots of volume. You reaped all the benefits kind of from that, and then now you're just kind of now your body has just yeah. figured out just how to acclimated. do this, and it's not going to produce any more for you. We're going to switch it up. We're going to drop you to a three day a week program, maps anabolic, put you full body, bump your calories, two hundred calories. The days that you were training, if you still want to go to the gym, that's fine. Go for a walk. Go to the gym, go for a walk. Yep. Your mobility. Yep. Yeah. And and yeah. What is what is the weight stuck at? The, so the right press. now on bench, it's like eighty five. Yeah. Um, I can do ninety five for a couple reps, like with twenty fives on each side. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm I'm stuck at eighty five. I just can't go up more than like twenty pounds on each side. Okay. What's your deadlift and, and then, squat at? Do you know what those numbers are? I don't deadlift because I hurt my back doing that, and so I just opt to not do it. I do RDLs at like 150 and then um my squat i just put 45 plus like a little bit on each side like around 150. That's good yeah. you're, you're, i don't you're do strong. too heavy with squats i mean to be quite honest with you uh it also says you train to failure so we're going to stop that too yeah um training to failure doesn't get you faster progress and in fact uh in the data supports this but even in our experience you'll get slower progress if you consistently train to failure what you need to do is stop your sets about two reps short uh, of failure Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Going to failure, if you did it for a short period of time, you'd see some progress. We probably have a really good episode dedicated to just quick. to this conversation. I yeah. think if, if you mm -hmm. go to uh, if you go to our AI at askmindpump.com mm -hmm. and then ask about what do the guys think about training to failure, uh, you'll get probably a really yeah. good breakdown and also and there's an just, there's, there's lots of data on this. It, it doesn't produce faster results, but it does cause more damage and require more recovery. So in other words you're slowing down your progress by going to failure and not getting any additional benefits. Especially this low calorie. And mm -hmm. that much volume. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm going to be straight up with you, yeah, Barry. You're just not recovering. You've done exceptionally well considering the that your workout is too high a volume, too much intensity, and especially your calories are so low. Mm -hmm. uh, 18, yeah. 1,800 calories with that much activity would be a cut. But I think what's happened is you're, you're, you've just taught your body to be super efficient with calories. I mean, I wouldn't even be afraid to bump you more than 200. I'd, br I'd, I'd bring up higher. But if you're afraid of gaining... Yeah. If you're afraid of gaining, you could start slower with like a like a 200 calorie bump. Uh, Maps Anabolic do the three day a week version of it, and within by the second week, you'll see your numbers go up. Yeah, I'm actually really okay. I'm actually really excited for you. This is just a couple little adjustments. Yeah, and I think it's very you know, clear. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's good because I was eating 1800 calories, and then I lowered it even more recently. Hmm. Um, so I'm thinking that was even like a like a worse thing to do. Yep. Um, because I was trying to lose weight and then I was, um, not saying, I know y'all talk about not weighing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought to go lower cause I have a friend who does bodybuilding and they were like, Oh no, you're not in a deficit. If you're eating 1800 calories, you have to go lower. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll go lower. But now I'm thinking, okay, no, not only do we need to not go lower, we need to go even higher. There's, than that. Yes. There's two ways to create a deficit. One is to eat less. The other is to burn more. And then there's two ways to yeah. burn more. One is to move more. Not very effective because your body adapts very quickly to that. Mm 
Mm -hmm. The other way is to teach your body to burn more calories. There's also two ways for you to actually see your body fat percentage go down is by actually cutting and leaning out and losing. You could also build muscle and your body fat percentage will go down. Yeah, because remember, it's a percentage yeah. of your body weight. So okay. here's what's going to happen. You bump your calories, two to 300 calories. You follow MAPS Anabolic. You're going to see some serious strength gains. You're going to also get leaner at the same time. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I should be putting more calories in my diet, like a mix of carbs and fats. If you're already hitting your protein, but you can get it from protein too. So yeah. one of the easiest ways, like I, somebody, I love to just uh, what eat exactly the same, but for every every time you eat your meat, get one more ounce. So whatever like your meat choices are, I don't know what choices of meat you normally eat, but just add an ounce. So if you always eat six ounces, do eat seven ounces of all your meat. If you always eat seven, eat eight ounces. So just add an ounce of meat to all uh, all your current, and that'll bump that'll bump the calories and keep protein up. One thing I did forget to mention is I'm vegetarian. Oh, okay. Well, so, <laughs> a, but I do, I do do Greek yogurt. So my protein is like Greek yogurt and like a lot of like different soy and beans and stuff. I kind of have to get creative with it, but I don't eat meat. Okay. I don't know if maybe that has something to do with it. Cause I know scientifically like meat is like the best for like muscle building. Um, and I don't know if that has something to do with it or not that I like don't eat any of that. If you're hitting, uh, your, but I do. If you're hitting your protein, if you're hitting your number consistently, you're probably yeah. fine. And you, just, you can have dairy. Okay. You're, you're okay yeah. with dairy. Oh, just have whey protein. Yeah, whey protein. D dairy is a super high quality protein. Yeah, she that's Greek yogurt. Yeah, she normally gets. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So it's, I, you go ahead and I mean, if you want to add 200 extra calories or so, and make it easy, I, I mean, you could add a protein shake uh, and, and okay. blend it with something. That would be an easy way to get it. Okay. You can okay, also I can, that's easy. You could also add essential amino acids. You know, vegans and vegetarians tend to do really well with essential amino acids, um, okay. and, and that adds very little calories uh, to your to your diet. But th those would be a few things to do. But really, literally, just bump your calories, follow a better workout program, don't go to failure. You will see prior within the second week. By the yeah. second week, yeah. you're going to be like, oh my god, I'm I'm getting so much stronger. I'm actually going to have Doug give you the private forum for free also. I would love for you to do exactly what we're telling you and then check back with us in 30 days. I think already okay. in 30 days, you're already going to be excited about what you're noticing and seeing already. And you think 2,000 calories is what I should aim for? Yeah, for good, now. Yeah, you, for now. You know, Barrett, you, you'll get to the point, if you do this right, if you do a slow reverse diet while strength training and building muscle, um, your 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 body weight and all that, you'll probably get up to 25, 2,600 calories at some point. Oh, very, for sure you will. What might happen, yeah. what might happen, and this is why I want you in the forum, is you might bump up 200 calories and then in two weeks you look back and you're like, oh my God, I still haven't put any weight on the scale and then I would bump you again another 200. So if depending okay. on how your body responds in the next couple of weeks, we might even go up even higher than that before the month is up. So just check in with us. Bump the 200 calories. Let us know in a couple of weeks how you're feeling, how you're doing, how everything's going, and then we'll decide if we want to bump again or hold you there. Now, keep in mind, a, a few pounds of water weight may happen, yeah, but that is yeah. that means your muscles are going to be more full and round. Yeah. yeah. So that that wouldn't be body fat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do weigh myself quite frequently, but I'm not emotionally attached Good. to what the number says. Good. Just because, Good. especially listening to you guys a lot, all it is is a number. It's it's not. It doesn't really mean much to me other than just to track where where it is. You know, I got an it's episode a, a great for you. Attitude for I that. got a good episode for you to listen to. It's called Why Women Should Bulk. It's one of our most popular episodes. Listen to that one. That'll break it down for you. Okay, perfect. I will do that. All right. All right, All right Thank Barry, you. we'll send that over All to you. Right. Thank you. Have a good rest of y'all's day. Yep, you, too. you too. You know, there's two general types of people that I like to work with. One are the easy fixes because you look at their stuff and you're like, oh, this is going <laughs> to blow your mind. The other one are the hard clients, right? The ones that you have to really figure out. But she's easy. This is easy. Yeah, I mean, she's going to failure. Screws tons of volume, low calorie. Like, change that up. So, yeah. And that's why I so, feel so confident telling her by week two, she's going to see crazy progress. Yeah. And yeah. she already has the right attitude with the scale. She's yep. not attached. She's watching it to yep, track yep. it, but she's not like attached to it. Like, it's a big deal. So, yep. the right attitude. Yeah. I can't wait. That's why I want her in the forum because I want to hear already in 30 days what she notices because she's going to see a significant difference already. Our next caller is Nathan from Texas. What's up, Nathan? What's going on, Nathan? What's happening? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. All right, man. All right. How can we help you? Good. Love the show. Big fan. Right on. Hey, uh, so uh, I'm here with my buddy, Nick. We're in the army and I just want to say quickly, anything we say is our personal opinion doesn't reflect the army. Um, but you guys are fitness professionals. And so I got a question, basically, you know, how would you guys train combat armed soldiers? So I have a written question. I'll just go ahead and read it. If that's okay. Yeah, go sure. for it. All right. 
So my name is Nathan Torres. I'm a U.S. Army Infantry Officer serving with the 1st Cavalry Division. My question to the group is the following. How would you guys recommend a combat armed soldier to train and meet the demands of combat? Our jobs require us to have endurance, speed, and strength. A good metric to show the Army's expectation for soldiers is the Army Combat Fitness Test. Side note, you guys should consider making a program designed to maximizing this test. Uh, in an effort to meet the Army's fitness expectations, I've tried all kinds of fitness to include, but not limited to, bodybuilding, strength and powerlifting training, CrossFit, track workouts, endurance running, Olympic lifting, calisthenics, and more. Over time, it's become frustrating trying to optimize my training because as I begin to focus on one area, another area begins to give. So the classic example is like, you focus on strength, cardio begins to give. I have mostly relied on CrossFit style training, seeing as it has been a good middle ground uh, for, for being in the Army. Curious to know your guys' thoughts on the topic, and I love your podcast. And Sal, I'm a Christian, and I've been witnessing your journey, and I'm just super encouraged by that. So that's my question, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Thank you. All right. So, okay, so <clears throat> I would love, by the way, you to send the test to us because we, if we had yeah. the test and what you need to be good at, we could literally write a program about that, very specific yeah. to that. So when you're actually in there and you're, you're training, basic training, I think the way that they train you guys is 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 – pretty sufficient. And in fact, if you add anything to that, people tend to overtrain by trying to add things when it gets a little bit more important is when you're, uh, you're not there all the time. Right. So, you know, when you're on your own, how do I maintain my fitness? That's when it starts to get more important in terms of, you know, what kind of, uh, of workouts you're doing. Um, it would definitely be a combination of, uh, strength training, calisthenics, and endurance training. And it would literally look like uh, one day of each with a lot of mobility in between. So it would be like a basic strength training yeah. day, traditional strength training. You're doing four lifts, four total, you know, full body lifts. Another day would be lots of calisthenics. And then the third day would be your runs. And it's, it's, it sounds basic and simple, but that's because it is what people tend to screw up is they try <clears> to do, do much. so much all too the much. time. And this is when I've trained people uh, who served, um, I did this even as a trainer. Uh, I would even uh, have struggled because I would have them do so many things all at once and it was hard for them to progress because they were constantly burnt out. It wasn't until I mm -hmm. backed way off, had them do about three days a week of training and then on the off days focus on recuperative things to minimize injury because that's a big one. Um, that they really started to progress. I mean, that same trajectory, it, it sounds very similar to, to mass performance. It would just be like yeah. phase twos is more calisthenic body weight driven. And so, you know, that would be a good sort of uh, replacement for that. But yeah, I think that progression and really just kind of honing in on the strength side of it, moving into, you know, body weight training and, and multi-planar type of functional type of training. And then into, you know, more of the endurance side of it would be a nice blend, a, a block for you to work on. Nathan, what is, give me like a typical week of training for you right now. Like, what does it look like when you follow your CrossFit or you follow your programming that you're doing? Like what's a normal week of like training look like? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reference two things quickly, kind of like what our job looks like and what we do at the platoon level. Because me and Nick are platoon leaders, so we're responsible for training up to 40 soldiers. Um, so what our job kind of requires us to do is to carry heavy machine guns, wearing body armor, sprinting up and down, getting down, shooting a machine gun, getting back up, essentially doing burpees, right? And we're not combat veterans, but we, we assume you'll have to do that for hours on end. Right. Um, so at the platoon level, how I have my soldiers training right now is Mondays. We do a run day, Monday, run day, long run, long, easy run. Tuesdays, we do an ACFT oriented, uh, PT session, some strength training. Wednesdays, we do sprints. Thursdays, we do a combat-oriented PT. Uh, I like to do rucks, which is, you know, wearing your heavy backpack, going on a nice long march. And then Fridays, sometimes a CrossFit-style workout, some variation of Murph. So that's kind of what we do every morning throughout the week. But a lot of times, you have to do extra stuff in the evenings in order to accomplish whatever your personal fitness goals are. A lot of guys go do bodybuilding lifts. I'm doing a lot of running right now. So that's kind of what it looks like. 
you got to really be careful. It's a lot. Yeah, you got to really be careful with balancing. This is why something's always got to give. Why you feel that way? Now you know. Here's yep. the thing too that that uh, people kind of you know like fitness people understand this, but I think a lot of people will see how the military trains soldiers, especially if you see it on TV or whatever, and they mistaken that for uh, optimal fitness training. Now you know this better than anybody. A lot of what you're training is 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 mental toughness, resiliency. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, we're not trying to make you more fit. It's we're trying to teach you how to withstand extreme exhaustion and still perform. Have grit. Yeah. So that's that's important as well. But but uh, but there's also like don't you don't want to overtrain and, and and burn someone out because then you'll start to get a lot of injuries. And if you're noticing that, if your yep. guys are coming back with ankle injuries and knee pain and shoulder pain, uh, oftentimes it's just. Uh, they're overdoing it. I, you know, I would throw in a recovery day. Yeah, mobilities. And I, yeah, like a day of like, all right, so Fridays or whatever, Wednesdays, we do like maybe 15 minutes of workout. And then the rest is is mobility. It's, uh, you know, priming. It's functional uh, type stuff to get the body to move well. It's uh, mm. it's to facilitate recovery. And I'm talking long term. Now, there's, now, short sprints of testing someone's resilience is perfectly fine. But you have to balance that out with the with the recovery, and and I'm going to tell you right now, like doing what you just said plus workouts at night, yeah, uh, in, in a long for a long period of time, that's going to overtrain pretty much everybody. Um, so I, I would definitely back off a little bit on some of that stuff, um, and then throw it in in short stints just to maintain that 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 toughness. Uh, but otherwise, it's a lot of like really taking care of the body and keeping it. Because I, I look, uh, I, I'm, again, I know the answer to this. If I were to ask you, what's the biggest obstacle for some of these guys for for doing some of these workouts? I, I bet it's injury. It's probably I got oh um, yeah. So so that's the thing yep. that you would want to look out for. Nathan, are you in our private forum yet? I'm not. I'm gonna have Doug put you in the private forum and in one of the, something like this where you have you know this specific and you have all these de demands weekly. If you give us kind of an idea, like as you're going through this process of like, okay, take the advice that we're giving you right now, maybe modify a few things and then keep us in the loop of what you're, what you're teaching the guys, what you're doing personally, and give us feedback of how you feel on like a biweekly basis. This will give us a better uh, perspective of what we know is going on based off of how you respond. Yeah. And then we can make yeah. micro adjustments to what you're currently Here, doing. I have I'll a, do that for you. I have a, so, and I'm going to send you a program that I think that you'll, you'll benefit from. Uh, so you could train your platoon. Uh, I'll send you prime pro maps, prime pro. And there's a lot of m uh, correctional exercise based movements in there that I think you could utilize uh, for, for, for the, yeah, like for a the full blown mobility. Day yeah. You know, and, and okay. Now here's one thing I can add on your strength training day with that, that one day that you said where you guys kind of lift, <clears throat> keep the intensity yep. moderate. So you're doing, you know, yep. you're doing five reps with something that you could probably do eight or 10 reps with, and you're just practicing the technique and focusing on that. And that'll do you yeah. a lot better than training with a really high intensity because the other days are so intense. Yeah, and if you can break up your workouts at all into shorter stints, uh, you know, to to promote even more recovery with that, that'll help a lot. Yeah, as well. I was thinking like a MAPS fifteen yeah, type of protocol. Because you can always stack the MAPS fifteen kind of protocol and do a few of them throughout the day, but just kind of that space in between, it's amazing what that does for the body to to be able to handle that kind of stress and recover uh more more appropriately. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds you, great. Use us in the forum though, because I think as if you keep us up to date on kind of what you're doing, what you're changing, what you're seeing, we can give you real time, like, okay, you know, add this in or take this away based off of the feedback you're giving us uh, of how everyone's feeling and how you're doing. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. All you right. Got, you got it, man. All Thanks right. For calling in, brother. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Thank you guys. You know, that's a tough one because you're balancing. Yeah. Yeah you know, the toughness with like, like what your body can handle physically. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're both valuable because you're a soldier. Well, this is why I would want him to kind of give us like updates because that's, it's so nuanced. They have so much stuff that are going on. I would want to know like, okay, what are you noticing? Yeah. What are you seeing right now? Okay. Sounds like we're doing too much of this. Yeah. Or it sounds like we need to do more of this. Well, you I don't really know that line, right? Yeah. yeah. From an outside perspective, because it isn't just what's optimal. Cause, yeah. cause you know, this is more than that. They need that, 
uh, mental discipline, you know, that physical discipline element there as well. So it's like, yeah, if we're going to press it a little bit more, you know, we'd like to see what that looks like. So now we can figure out opportunities for recovery. Yeah, five days a week would look something like just off the top of my head, like one day would be hard. That's one hard strength. And that's you, it. The rest is all just like one hard day, whatever it is, yeah. right? Whatever they value the most, then it would be like three moderate days and two low intensity days mm -hmm. if I were to balance it out. Agreed. Hey, sorry to interrupt real quick. Maps resistance and maps OCR for this month are 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Leslie from Missouri. Leslie, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Hey, I'm having a fangirl moment. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Like, better than celebrities. Oh, like, oh. that much. Good, Fitness is suck. my jam. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be associated with them. <laughs> oh, I get it, I get it, yeah. I get it. Yeah, we've never been to a Diddy um, party. <laughs> Put that okay, I'll start off with saying thank you so much for everything you guys do. I know everyone says that, but it really has changed my life in so many positive ways. Um, so thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. So I'll just start with my question. So my question was about your program, Muscle Mommy. Um, I personally have been wanting to do that program, but my husband has been wanting to start working out with me as well. Um, so I was just wondering, and it, I know it's called muscle mommy, but can it also be for males? Yeah. No, no. He'll grow boobs. Muscle daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's great programming yeah. for, for men and women. The yeah. difference, the, the real difference is it's it just a little bit more consideration for the areas of yeah. the body. Glutes, you know, hamstrings. Yeah, yeah, shoulders. Which is uh, all going to be beneficial for him yeah. too. He's going to develop a great body with it as well. Yeah. And then the, you know, the, the, the nutrition and supplement hacks are a little bit more female. Uh, specific, right. especially the supplements, but the programming, it's a great, yeah, great programming. Yeah, You'll yeah. get, yeah, great results with it. Solid. Okay, perfect. Cause I'm in performance right now. Um, just cause I needed a little switch up cause I've done anabolic and aesthetic. Um, so I went to performance. I kind of did them in a different order, but, um, I needed that mobility that was in there, awesome. but perfect. Yeah, okay. Um, perfect. and then do you have time for one more real quick? Yeah, we yeah, do. yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Okay, perfect. Okay, so my second one was about um, how to pro properly reverse diets because um, I have like a past with my relationship with food isn't hasn't always been the healthiest. So I want to make sure that I do it correctly. Um, so when I started tracking, I wasn't even eating around like 1500. Like I was still below that. So then I went up to 1950. Um, just to see, because I know you need at least 2000, you know, that's the typical, typical one daily. Um, but I didn't know like where to go from here. Do I go up or should I go down? Well, okay. So first, first off, how did you feel, how did you feel and, and what happened when you went from below 1500 to 1950? Uh, honestly, not a lot. So no well, differences. I mean, that's actually a good thing. Well, if you added that many calories and you didn't notice much. So no different. weight gain. Uh, what about strength, energy? Any changes anywhere? No weight gain. My strength like flew. Like I got so strong, it was crazy. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Leslie, I'm so, gonna I'm gonna yeah. point something out to you. That, that's really <laughs> yeah, yeah. important. Okay, so very important to consider. I asked you if anything happened when you <clears> bumped <throat> your calories. You said not really. Your strength exploded. Okay. So with that, so the reason why I'm pointing that out is because we're placed your, your without emphasis, a bunch of weight gain. Yeah. By the yeah, way, too. your yeah. emphasis is on the weight right. on the scale. But first off, your weight didn't go up, and your strength went through the roof. You know what just happened? Built muscle. You built muscle, and you sped up your metabolism. I mean, that's killer. Yeah, yeah, that's killer. That's perfect. I would reverse you some more. Yeah, another I two, think, another 200 calories. Yep, 200 calorie bump. Okay. Just go up to and, and that's the proper way to reverse diet. You just kind of do slow incremental bumps between 100 to 300 calories, 200 is probably about right for you. You do it and then you just wait a week or two or three and see how you feel. And then you do it again. Once you get up to a certain point where you're like, okay, I'm eating a lot of food. Yeah. Uh, I think I could <laughs> yeah. go down from here. Then you do your cut and then boom, you get leaner. Okay. Uh, do Should I weigh, like, do I weigh myself? Cause I personally don't weigh myself right now just because I, the number I don't, it's not good for me. So then I don't. just- then don't. Yeah, you don't, then need don't. To. Then no, don't. Uh -uh. Yeah. No, wait. Okay. Yeah. Just go off of how you feel. Yeah, keep, go, keep keep pushing that 200, 200 more calories every week or every other week as you, as you want, as long as you feel good. Like if you 
bump 200 and then in two weeks i ask you how you're feeling you're like adam i feel great i feel strong i don't feel like i'm putting on any body fat like i've, I've good air okay let's go another 200 and i just keep asking you those questions mm -hmm. and as long as you're like yeah I, I mean i really feel good i'm gonna keep stretching you that direction until we get to a point where you're eating so much food you look back and you go yeah adam this you're is just too much food exhausting it's a lot food. it's a lot for me to eat 2800 calories a day can we come down a little bit i say great perfect place let's cut down cut you back yeah. down to 2400 and watch yourself lean out eating more food than you were eating before yeah i mean mm -hmm. that's what's awesome about this Okay, perfect. Well, that's amazing. That's all I got for you guys. <laughs> no, that's great. And I'm gonna tell you again. I want to reiterate this. Yeah, phenomenal. You're it. Yeah, that is phenomenal. That you went up, you went up 400 calories. Yes, and you just got a lot stronger. Like your metabolism ramped way up just from that. Yep. So you're this is good. Keep us posted. I'd love to hear back from you in like a month or two. Okay, I will. Thank uh, you guys. Wait, hold right, on, hold wait. on. I'm gonna give you something. We didn't give her anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me give you a program. <laughs> What's what? What other program do you want? Uh, well, I don't have Muscle Mommy. Oh. oh. What? Yeah, oh, I was going to purchase it. I wanted to ask this first and then I was going to get it. Well, then we'll oh, yeah. I just took, I just took away a sale, Adam. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. We're going to give it to you. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate no it. No problem. And, all right. Bye bye. Bye. Let's, uh, I think her husband and her would love symmetry after that. Would be even be awesome? Should I think she already has well. it. Oh, good. Yeah, good. yeah. this is gonna be great. Look, you know, we named it Muscle Mommy with some considerations for women, but it is a great program for. I mean, oh, I it's love just the solid program. programming. Yeah, solid, yeah. solid yeah. program. And it, for people listening right now, something very interesting happened in that conversation. I ask, did anything happen or change when you bumped your calories? And we're so hyper focused <laughs> on gaining weight that we ignore yeah. all these incredible benefits. Her strength exploded. Yeah. Like that is a big thing that happened. Um, and that's exceptional. And that's what you want when you reverse diet. Strength mm -hmm. going up, not too much change on the scale. That is exceptional. Yeah, you want to add lean muscle and replace the body fat. So totally. it's, that's the way to do it. Our next caller is Stephanie from Texas. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Hey, How hey guys. How's it going? Good. That's Thanks a, for having me. That is a cool painting behind you. Yeah. What is it? Oh, it's it's a Caravaggio. Oh, can you let me see? Can you move a little bit? I want to see what's. That is awesome. That's great. It's uh, it's the supper at Emmaus. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So I, thanks for having me. Shout out to my best friend Sharon who introduced me to you guys. You guys are super awesome. Thank you. Um. The qu the questions that I have for you today are regarding Muscle Mommy. Um. So I'll read through the questions and then I'll I'll give you some background about myself. The questions that I have are, are rhodiola, ashwagandha, cordyceps, DN9 safe while breastfeeding? How can I naturally raise my hormone levels? I know that my estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and DHA are all low. I've had blood work done. I didn't do the Dutch test, but I had it tracked through my pregnancy and it was all low during my pregnancy. So I supplemented then. Um, I know I'm going to be low postpartum, um, but just wondering how towards the end of like the year mark of postpartum, how can I start raising that naturally? Um, what are some alternative exercises to all the cable machine workouts in the muscle mommy? And what are some alternative exercises for someone with diastasis recti? So for the push-ups, reverse crunch and, and the planks. Um, also with the rest period, it's, it's suggested 90 seconds. Is that in between each exercise or each round each set of, each time you do set. a set mm -hmm. you rest so if you do okay. 10 reps then you rest 90 seconds then you oh. yeah okay and then uh this isn't related to muscle mommy it's more uh personal because i'm a reservist in the marine corps so i'm gonna have to start incorporating cardio at some point and get that back in game um but just wondering like when and how i should start incorporating the cardio into the workout plan so background for me, I'm 39 years old. I'm 139 pounds. I'm almost three months postpartum. I also have a three and a half year old. So time for exercise is very minimal and it's throughout the day if I can, or like in, during nap time. Um, I'm not measuring my protein, but I'm, I've been listening and I've been doing my best to eat protein every meal, snack with protein, have a, a protein bar before I go to bed at night, I have a one finger separation in my abdomen. Um, my sleep is okay. Obviously I'm having, have an infant here, so I'm still breastfeeding at night. I'm lucky if I get a solid six hours, um, some medical issues that I've encountered. So I have intestinal ischemia. So 
the max I can do for cardio is about 30 minutes. Um, I am currently seeing a pelvic floor physical therapist. So that's what I've been doing on the, on the trigger days, those exercises. And I do have the MTHFR mutation um, supplements that I'm taking. I'm taking a postnatal vitamin, a mineral complex that has magnesium, uh, DHA, DHEA, and a postpartum probiotic. I know that I have heavy metal toxicity, just the amount of vaccines that I've had and uh, my military experience, just being around all that, um, to let in everything. Experience exercising. I was a collegiate long distance runner, multiple marathons, ultras. I did a lot of HIIT workouts when I was active duty. Um, I've The past year, I've started focusing more on strength training with the kettlebells and dumbbells, but I don't... I don't have access to a gym and it's kind of hard to get to one. So that's what the cable machine. Okay. Uh, I don't think muscle mommy is the best. No, program. not yeah. three maps, months. Maps, maps, maps 15 Ma- or, or map go. starter. Yeah. I think map starter would be ideal for you, especially considering the, the, the stability yeah, component, sure. continue doing the pelvic floor mm-hmm. exercises with your therapist. Then you can avoid the direct ab work that you'll see in starter. But you map starters where you need to go. Maps muscle mommy is is uh, is going to be too much for too much got. too quickly. Yeah. Uh, eventually, eventually we get there. Yeah, I would do mu- muscle mommy probably nine ten months postpartum. Uh, so start with starter. Now the first question about the herbs, right? No, I wouldn't take anything, any of those supplements, uh, especially the herbs, unless it's fully cleared by your uh, by your doctor. Uh, theanine's probably okay, but I would always clear it. You know, it's interesting when you look at some of these herbs and how they affect, uh, your, 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 your baby or, or even during pregnancy, you'd be surprised how many of them are not good to take that normally would be great to take. So I, I I always, all my clients breastfeeding or pregnant, you're not taking anything. I'm not going to have you take anything unless it's, it's explicitly advised by, uh, your doctor. Um, supplement wise, you said you have the MTHFR gene. Um, are you taking yeah. methylfolate or methylated B vitamins? I am. So I'm Good. taking uh, the Best Nest brand. Yeah. And that actually has all the methylated Excellent. formulas in it. Crate, creatine would be a good supplement mm-hmm. for someone like you as well. Uh, it's great for people with methylation issues. So creatine would be, yeah, would be a good supplement. <clears throat> but yeah, it would be starter and that's it. Starter and your physical therapy yeah. would be it. And then after that, MAPS 15, you could do the advanced version. And then after that, Muscle Mommy. If you don't have starter, we'll send that to you. And there's not much oh. in there that you shouldn't have to modify because you don't need much but dumbbells and a stability ball in there. That's no, no, no. It. You just yeah. dumbbells and a stability ball. Was, yeah. Do you – was the DHEA recommended by your doctor? Okay, fine. You're good then. Uh, so other than that, that is it. Now, I know you're going to look at starter, especially someone like you with military <laughs> yeah. background and marathon experience, and you're going to be like, this is too easy. But I cannot stress this enough. Your uh, your muscle recruitment patterns are different postpartum. A lot of things have had to change to make room for baby. So that's number one. Uh, you went through pregnancy and then childbirth. That's number two. Number three, your sleep is not good. And it's probably not going to be good for six months to a year. So uh, th- it's going to feel a lot easier than you think. Trust the process. The biggest mistake people like you make postpartum is they overdo it. And then what they end up getting is like injuries that don't seem to go away. My hormones don't want to balance. I stopped breastfeeding. Why are my hormones still out of whack? I feel like I just can't recover. And that starts to show up a little later. So we, we need to start on the right foot. So start with starter and then hold off on a muscle mommy till much later. I'm also going to give you a tip on how to pr- approach this program and train. Uh, I'm guessing with the marathons, the military background, the hit workouts, the way you train, uh, the way you approach the weights is going to be important, right? So if I have a client like you, I'm the, what I'm communicating is that, okay, this may seem like an easy program for you because you're not beating yourself up, but I want you to become obsessed with the movement, making it perfect and slowing it down and squeezing yeah. and just really become obsessed with the, the art of the movement, like trying to make it look perfect, that is the way I want you approaching the workout. Not, is this hard enough for me? Am I sweating enough? Am I breathing enough? Like, is weight, this is weight isn't enough for me. Like, 
get that out of your head. The way we look at this is like, I want to perform all these movements better than the model who's demonstrating it on that video. Like that's how I want your attitude to be towards the workout. That is going to serve you uh, much, so much better, so much better. And I know that when I have a client like you who's got that that tough background, that's going to be the challenge is you're going to want, this is too easy. Give me more weight or let's go, let's keep it moving. And it's like, no, 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 no. Let's make it beautiful and let's slow it down. And if it's easy, pause, squeeze, slow the tempo down even more. Way like, better results from that. That's how I, I need you thinking and approaching this workout. Now, so. the heavy metal toxicity, you're assuming you have higher levels. You might be right, but you could test that. Um, uh, Dr. Cabral's team has an inexpensive heavy metals test and then you'll know, and then they can work with you even while breastfeeding to help get rid of some of these heavy metals. And I'm pretty sure most of the protocols are safe during, pre during breastfeeding. And if not, they can modify it for you, but that's the only way to know you just do it. It's easy test. Heavy metals test is really easy. And then you'll see like, Oh, I got high amounts of whatever aluminum or, or whatever. Okay. That's Already. it. We'll, we'll send that right. to you. Congratulations Already. on the baby, by the way. Yes. Yeah, thank you guys. And uh, congratulations to you. So I heard you're going through RCIA. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. All righty. Thank you guys. Thank awesome. you. Have a good day. I think I can see the baby. I think she was holding the baby while she was talking about it. Oh, she was. I saw a little I hair pop up. I didn't see it. So I did. cute. I did not see that. So uh -huh. cute. Yeah. You know, um, just for any women listening right now who have a fitness background, postpartum, um, this is so hard to judge. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't trust your own feelings because what happens is two, three, four months postpartum, yeah. you're like, oh, I'm, I feel good. I'm going to get right back into it. And it's like, you, you can't go too it's easy. Not, it's not the same body. No. We gotta, yeah, we got to get And what back. Adam's saying about the slow and control, that's, what regain, that's how you regain those recruitment patterns that are going to be beneficial. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll strengthen these poor you recruitment re patterns. You the whole process. And then you get what happens that you're a year, two years postpartum. You're like, why do I keep hurting my back? Yeah. Why is my, pa you know, it's because, well, those, those recruitment patterns were never corrected. Right. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope she listens to me. I do know with this client, uh, I mean, even when I her out the gates, which she thought the the the, pr the way it was written was like in circuits to where you're just resting oh, yeah. after you do yeah, all yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. Like That's why she then, smiled when I'm like, rest in between sets. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I just, I hope she, she takes that to heart and can really shift that mindset and just kind of hear me in your head okay while you're doing this mm -hmm. uh, on this loop stephanie it's just you got it you got to approach that workout that way and it will be uh mentally challenging for you challenging because it'll be too easy you'll feel like and you'll feel like this is lame and like so i i hope she she follows through on that because i think this is the part that will matter the most is the way her how she approaches this workout all right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher.